Yeah, that, uh, sorry. Okay, so I did have this like really big idea to make this video in my head, but to be honest, the practicality of actually making it and putting all of the time and effort in to get it done would have been way, way too much. And you guys just want it out. So this video right now, we're going to go straight in. This is the complete guide to cue cards, how I've used them to get all nines of GCSEs, how I've used them to get hopefully all A stars at A level. I've actually got my results, but not the grade results, but they all sit within the previous A star grade boundaries. And yeah, it's just going to be the complete guide. Everything you need to know about cue cards, how to make them, how to use them, where you can get them and all of that. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. And by the end of the video, I'm also going to be telling you how you can get all of my cue cards that I used. Yeah, cool. First of all, what actually are cue cards? These are cue cards. So are these, but then so are all of those. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's pretty safe to say that I did go a bit overboard with the cue cards, but I mean, it works. Like, I got the grades, I smashed it out, and they were definitely the best thing that I could have done with my time, in my opinion. That massive pile of cue cards and all of those cue cards there allowed me, single-handedly, to get the grades I got and to get, like, 90% in some of my exams, to get 100% actually my history exam and things like that. They were incredibly effective for me, so I'm going to share with you exactly how I used those and how I made them, etc, etc, to get those grades. Obviously, it might not work for everyone, but it definitely worked for me and it works for everyone else that I've spoken to that has applied the same method. But I feel like a lot of people have a preconceived about what a cue card is and what it does. People just think that it's a single question and it allows you to memorize the answer to an arbitrary idea. But that is not the case. There are so many different routes you can go down with cue cards to make them effective for pretty much anything. But I use them for three key reasons. And these are those reasons. First of all, I use cue cards to actually develop and memorize my understanding of the content itself. So I'll be reading through textbooks and anything that like clicks in that moment, I'll make a cue card on. Also anything that I think we need for the exam. Using the specification to inform that decision, I will make a cue cue card on it so that I can begin to memorize that content but obviously as you're going through those things start to click and you develop a better understanding of the content as well then once I've kind of got that baseline understanding once I've made the cue cards and maybe I've been through them once or even twice before I start doing some exam questions when I do exam questions anything that I get wrong or anything like that I'll make a cue card on exactly what I did wrong for example if my wording was slightly off or if I didn't cover all of the points that question needed I will write a cue card on that so on the front it might be the question and then on the back it might be everything that I missed because going through that allows you to memorize what went wrong so that you avoid that in future and when you're faced with a similar question and then the same logic applies with eliminating stupid errors if I literally just forget to check my significant figures and write the wrong number of significant figures I'll write a cue card saying what is the biggest or most common mistake that I make when I'm answering x type of question it'll be don't check significant figures so then I'll realize when I'm in an exam and I'm faced with a similar question that that is what I usually do and and then I make sure that I check in that moment. Like continually cycling through that and continually drilling into your mind that you don't usually check for significant figures makes you check in the exam and that's how you eliminate stupid errors. But the whole reason that cue cards are so effective is because they exploit two main revision ideas. They exploit active recall and spaced repetition. Those are the two most effective principles that you need to be able to revise literally anything, memorize it as fast as humanly possible, and yeah, essentially just do well in your exams. Fundamentally, a cue card is a stimulant on the front page or on the front of the cue card. That might be a question, that might be a definition, like define something. But it's just a call to action that gets you actively trying to recall the answer and the information. And then on the back of the cue card, you're obviously going to have that answer. So that rather than just trying to recall the information, you try to recall it. If you get an answer, you check that answer. If you don't get an answer, you read the answer straight after so that you can draw connections between the stimulant on the front of the cue card card and the answer or what you need on the back of the cue card. So that's how the active recall aspect of a cue card works but then you've also got the spaced repetition. So I actually go through my cue cards before mocks so I'll try to go through them all at least once before an exam but obviously preferably more because that's how spaced repetition works. The more you do it over a spaced period of time the more effective it is and the more likely you are to memorize that connection between the stimulant and the information and then if you can memorize the connection and the links that you draw between between the stimulant and the information, the more likely you are to be able to draw that same link between a similar or identical stimulant in an exam, which might be the exam question, and the answer to that question, if that makes sense. So essentially, cue cards as a whole are trying to make you aware of A, all of the content, an understanding of the content, but also where you typically go wrong in terms of making stupid mistakes and with exam techniques, so that you can realize that whilst you're in the exam and be able to answer all of the questions. 
questions to attain the highest marks possible in those questions. And that is how the cue cards work. So now I'm just gonna take you through a little bit of exactly how I write the cue cards. It's kind of basically that, but I'll just actually write a cue card for you. So yeah, let's go. Okay, right, so when I'm making cue cards on a chapter, whether that be like physics, chemistry, maths, whatever, when I'm making cue cards on a chapter, what I'll do is I'll open the book, the textbook, the online resource to that chapter, and then I'll literally just work my way through it and make cue cards on everything that I feel like I need to know. I'll use these specification points to know kind of like generally what I need to know, and then I'll ignore everything that to me appears blatantly obvious. So for example, calculating speed, I'm like extremely confident that that is distance traveled over time taken. Like I won't need to write a cue card on that because I've already completely memorized that from GCSE. But then going on to distance time graphs, again I know exactly how a distance time graphs work. But say for example you didn't know how to calculate instantaneous speed with a distance time graph. First of all, all you do is you'd read this and make sure you understand it. You need to be able to understand it to be able to make a cue card on it, otherwise you're consolidating something that you don't actually understand. And that doesn't work because you can't memorize something that you don't understand, it just doesn't really have the same effect and you won't be able to answer all questions questions in the exam. So it literally says here that the instantaneous speed at a particular time is found by drawing the tangent to the distance time graph at that time. So literally all I'm going to do I'm gonna write how do you calculate instantaneous speed on a distance time graph. Literally just like that. Then on the reverse side what I'm going to do is I'm going to say you draw a tangent to the graph at that point and calculate gradient. And now that would literally be all you need on that cue card. That sums up exactly how, as it says on the front of the cue card, you calculate instantaneous speed on a distance time graph. That is all you need to be able to calculate it, but you want to develop the understanding of why that is. Because remember, drawing links between those ideas and gaining a better understanding of the fundamental reasoning behind something helps you to learn it so that in the exam you can get the full marks. So I'd then go on to write this. We know gradient is change in x over change in y, and as the x-axis is distance and the y-axis is time, that is equal to change in distance over change in time, which we know to be the velocity. So that kind of gives you additional information on the initial point to help boost your understanding of it and allow you to really exploit it in an exam. And that is how I make my cue cards. I'll literally just work my way through the entire textbook or chapter that I'm making cue cards on at that time and follow that exact process to make cue cards on all of the content as a whole. So when do you actually want to be making those cue cards? Well, ideally, whenever you finish a topic in a subject, you'll make cue cards on that topic immediately because then the understanding is still fresh in your mind and you can write all of that on the cue cards to trigger that understanding again when you revisit the cue cards later down the line when you might have forgot it and how you got to that understanding initially, if that makes sense. So you want to be making it when you've got the understanding fresh in your mind so that you can write it in a way that allows you to re-trigger that understanding later down the line when you might have already forgot. But don't worry because if you haven't already done that and I didn't for the whole of GCSEs I actually started making cue cards really late probably like December so like four or five months before my exams it's fine because going through them and making those cue cards re-triggers that understanding so it's immediate revision but then you can also use those cue cards to really solidify your understanding of the content I started making those cue cards late and I still got all nine to GCSE so no matter where you are start making them it is going to be a godsend it is really going to help but yeah so once you've made all of those cue cards on the content itself when you're coming up to things like exams that's when you want to be going through those cue cards and re-consolidating your understanding of the content itself by literally just actively using those cue cards like I explained at the start and once you've been through a whole topic of those cue cards or literally all of your cue cards do practice questions either practice questions on that topic subtopic or the entire subject as a whole and anything you get wrong make cue cards on those as I said remember stage two was actually using it to perfect exam practice and then again if you're noticing any silly errors that keep coming up make cue cards on those errors because like I said at the start, you can use it to memorize it through anything. If you're making those stupid errors, use it to memorize those errors so when you're in an exam, you consciously check for those errors and don't make them. Saving you marks and ultimately getting you the grades you actually want to get. Yeah. And that is essentially how you can use cue cards to get all nines in your GCSEs, all A stars in your A levels, even uni. Yeah, even uni to be fair. Another quick thing though that I just want to add is when you're going through those cue cards, if you ever have any kind of like aha or like click moments where you suddenly realize something about the content on one of the cue 
cards that helps your understanding or link different cue cards together, write it down on that cue card. Because if you do that, next time you're looking through the cue cards, if you've forgotten that aha moment or that click, you'll re-trigger it and that will help consolidate your understanding. But yeah, that is pretty much exactly how I use my cue cards and how you can do it too to get all of the grades you want to do. So it's kind of a no-brainer. I just crack on with it as soon as possible. You can use Anki as well for digital cue cards, but that doesn't have the same malleability as physical cue cards, but it does have other benefits as I'm going to explain in that next video. Right, I'll tell you what, I am sweating like crazy. It's so hot right now. We're currently, as I'm filming this, in the middle of that heat wave. So it's like 27, 28 degrees and my room is just naturally way hotter than anywhere else in the house, which is just stupid because I can't sleep. I sweat loads and it's just not really ideal whatsoever. Well, I can't complain. It's sunny, it's nice weather and it's all calm. Hopefully everyone's enjoyed that weather too. But yeah, no, as I said at the start, all of the cue cards that I did use to get nines and ASRs in my A-levels and GCSEs, uh, specifically for maths, physics, chemistry, but also some English, some business, and I believe a couple of history, are all linked in the description below so you can go check them out if you want to. But also, I've teamed up with all of the revision gurus at GCSE online courses. So if you actually purchase one of their GCSE courses, down in the description below, you get access to all of the cue cards up on my website. I believe there's about kind of like 50, 60 pounds worth and literally thousands of really insightful cue cards that again, I used. So they have been proven to work in my actual GCSEs and A-levels. Yeah, honestly, GCSE online courses, they've got a great team. I really like the people that are working there. So I definitely recommend going and checking out that course. Here's a little preview. So they offer on-demand courses for English, maths and French GCSE, taught by teachers, professional tutors, GCSE examiners and various other experts to give you hours of bite-sized videos that are ultimately going to help you get the grades you want. But otherwise, yeah, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. I really hope that it is going to be helpful and has provided you with some value and some understanding of how you can use cue cards to do literally insane in your exams. If you haven't already subscribed, I definitely recommend subscribing because not only do we have loads of this kind of study content, we've also got like sick form uni vlogs, we've got travel vlogs, we've had some crazy adventures so far. I've actually just posted a London vlog where I went down to London with my girlfriend. It's all cinematic, the edit's sick, the music's good. And I've got loads more like that coming. So I definitely recommend subscribing. If you did enjoy the video and did find it helpful, I'd love it if you drop a like, comment what you want to see in the future. And yeah, I just hope to see you in the next video. Otherwise, that is it for me today. I'll see you next time. Bye. I live inside my own world of make-believe